Great. My, uh, to my knowledge, the current measure of risk that most pretrial instruments use, and I, I know less about sentencing and other instruments, is rearrest, the likelihood of rearrest. Is that the right measure of risk? And if not, what is the right measure of risk? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think the likelihood of rearrest is um, uh, an appropriate measure in many ways for the reasons that I talked about. Um, uh, whether you um, are likely to be rearrested, I think, says much more in many cases uh, about policy decisions, about where the police are going to go uh, and where they're going to be determined to discover crime than about where crime is actually occurring. So you're really predicting, in a way, um, uh, uh, you, you're, you're predicting policing more than you are predicting um, uh, rearrest. I mean, the, uh, who's actually committing crime? Uh, I, I mean, it is a challenge in terms of how do you, because as I said, uh, I think the, the status quo where judges make their own subjective, often racially biased decisions uh, and class biased decisions about who to let go, um, often driven by politics, hasn't been working. Um, I, think, I think the jury is still out. I understand there's some evidence maybe to the contrary. Long term, uh, whether risk assessment tools that are relying so heavily on really this kind of um, self-fulfilling prophecy of, uh, of um, risk uh, is going to, in the end, both result in long-term decarceration, when I think uh, in many ways you're keeping people very much entrenched in the carceral state, um, and two, could lead, even if we do decarcerate, which I think is an important goal, um, to what is really a, a, you know, to use an annoying term, I guess, carceral archipelago of surveillance. Uh, uh, you know, I was imagining the other day, what if we walked around, and this is being a little bit uh, hyperbolic, but, um, uh, it, and, and, you know, 80% of, of black men in certain communities are walking around with ankle monitors, right? And 2% of white men are walking around with ankle monitors, and the government knows where they are at all time. And it's not that far-fetched in that I was in Wilmington, Delaware recently, and 60 to 70% of black men, I think, between the ages of 18 and 40 in Wilmington, Delaware, are on probation. They can't vote. They're monitored all the time. They're violated for the pettiest of things. And so um, that's, that's not a world that, that we want to end up in. And, um, and I think risk assessment tools and using kind of what sounds like objective evidence to say this person in this community is very risky, just, you know, it basically keeps us in the same place we are today. Um, it's just um, a slightly different view of um, control and surveillance. So um, it's not, I, I don't have a great answer of how do you, what kind of things should, should um, you know, judges take into account that would make it unbiased because um, we are so, we live in such a deeply racially biased world um, and racist in, in, in many respects that, um, and, and this isn't a satisfying answer, whether we're using risk assessment tools, frankly, um, or, or judges um, uh, or, or humans kind of um, uh, implicit kind of instincts, um, I think uh, it's, it's, we're, 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 we're not going to be in the world we want to be. And the, the other thing I just want to say quickly, which is a broader policy issue, there are other ways to lower jail populations, obviously, than releasing people uh, to supervision and to probation. Um, you have to look at why you're, who, who you're criminalizing, why you're arresting people in the first place, and obviously where you're investing your resources. Should it be in surveillance uh, and supervision, or should it be in other areas of community engagement that long-term could have a much more dramatic effect? But that's